Hello guys, John with you again and we're back here with the elephant, okay, and uh, what we're going to get done today is we're going to get the decals done today, and I'm also, uh, when I finish the decals, I'm just going to glass coat it, you don't need to see me glass coating it, but I will show you what I use for, for glass coat, it's my preferred glass coat, and there's loads of other different ones there, it depends on what manufacturer you go for, um, I just have a, a one that I've started off using Tamiya glass coats I tried a couple of other ones and uh, I've ended up with this one and I really really like this one it's suitable for armor and uh, a lot of people sort of swear for by for uh, aircraft and things like that as well so you know it's 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 just kind of a personal preference really okay so in this video like I said we're going to cover decals right so we're going to do step by step uh, thing on how to do decals like I said this whole series really is it's, it's aimed towards the beginner modeler or person that's got back into modeling and kind of forgetting about a couple of little ways to do certain things and things you might have done years ago you want to learn a new way of doing it or, 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 or say not necessarily a new way but a, you know different ways of doing it and then for a finish then decide your own way of doing it okay so what do we need anyway so we go through the little bits of equipment that you might need for putting on your decals. Things you wouldn't even think about, believe it or not, some of them, right? So anyway, obviously, you're going to need your kit. Right, so we've got that, we'll put that aside. Uh, other handy things, and things that are sort of necess necess necessary. You'll need a tub of water, little dish. I, f I find these quite handy, the little, uh, little Tupperware. Um, Containers, really. They're doing the little. I wouldn't call them sandwich boxes because you wouldn't exactly get very many sandwiches into that. But you know the thing, okay? It's one of these little boxes. A uh, small little bit of water in the bottom of that, and uh, you need that for soaking your decals or your decals or whatever you want to freaking call them, okay? What is also you will need, of course, is your decals. Okay, we're using these ones. These are the ones that came with this kit. So you'll need your decals. Then you'll need to something to cut them out because you don't go wet the whole sheet. I remember when I was a kid and I started off, I used to wet the whole sheet and you'd be trying to slide them off and put them on. And I've just learned an easier way to do it. Okay, and this is the easier way to do it. Okay, so you'll need your decal sheet. Then you will need something to cut them out. Okay, either a scissors or a hobby knife okay either one will do what else do you need you will need a tweezers right you will need a couple of these okay what they are of course is q-tips cotton buds ear cleaners nose cleaners bum cleaners whatever you want to call them okay and a couple of them as well you will also require some of this type of stuff okay this is a decal setting solution okay um, there are many different brands and uses out there this is one there from ultimate they're an English company um, it's a decal setting solution and this is the strong one now you can get various strengths as well like if you're doing aircraft you need something pretty strong you might even need the extra strong when you're doing de uh, aircraft because you want the decals to go into all the little grooves and things like that but for armor the, the ordinary strong is, is it works for me okay as, as i said there are loads of different brands and different ones uh you've got sol um microsol and microset um a lot of the other companies, Vallejo would do sort of a, a setting, a, a, a decal setting solutions. Those of other different companies, but basically they're all really the same thing. Okay, it's a setting solution for your decals, and what that does is it kind of prepares the surface for your decal to go onto, so it's, it sticks easy enough, and it also softens, or softens the decal. Um, especially if you want to kind of fit it. Just say we had the decal now, and it fitted over these uh, bolts right the bolts that are on the side of that right now luckily enough we're not but we don't have to worry about that with this one but if you want to, if, if 
your decal came in a place where it sort of fitted over bolts and things like that. Your strong decal setting solution will soften the decal and it'll, after a couple of little applications of the uh, fluid, it'll settle it down over the uh, o over the nut and it'll kind of form around it. It's off, it, it does exactly what it says. It softens the, um, the setting solution. And of course you will need a little brush for applying said same decal solution. Okay, so there's your equipment. Oh yeah, I'll just bring the camera down just a little bit there. Okay, there's your equipment. That's about as much as you need. Not very much at all. And uh, most of these you'll kind of have around the house. Okay. Um, we've already used our tweezers. We've already bought them in for this, for in the making of it. So what, what else are you using? Your brush. We've already used a brush. So the only other extra things you're getting really is the scissors, which you can uh, acquire from the missus, or if you are the missus, just grab it out of your uh, thing. You got the cotton buds. Most houses have them. Most people use them for cleaning various uh, thingies. And of course, then you'll have to go off and get yourself a decal setting solution. Now. You could even get away without it, to be quite honest with you, especially if you're going up just on a flat surface, you could do without it. But I just got into the habit where I use it on everything, okay, whether I've got to soften the decal or not, I tend to use them anyway. Right, so let's start. So we we'll push what we don't need at the moment to the side and we'll decide what decals we want, okay. So I'm going to need these three crosses. So I cut them out. I'm not going to go for very many decals on this to be quite honest with you. I'm going to have three crosses and we're going to have some divisional marks. Now I'm not going by the instructions for this to be quite honest with you. Um, I suppose you, 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 in a way you really sh I, I really should. So you know right, you're going to need those and you're going to need say two sets of numbers. Now because it's pretty light if it was going dark I'd go with white numbers um, but I'm going to go with dark numbers because it's uh, it's going on something dark. Now, will we go for uh, yeah? We'll go for five two four. Why not five two four? I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. <laughs> but but kind of sticking to. Uh, to the proper way. Okay, that's enough. That's enough decals for this one. Um, on the back of your instructions, you will always find a sheet here like that, and that will show you your paint guide and your decal positioning. Okay. Now with this one, they're just giving the A, B, C, and D, and E, and all that kind of thing, and then it gives a rundown of the decal sheet and what each of those are. But um, like I said, we're just going to carry on with these. I have an idea of what I want to do because I don't want to put too many on because I want to uh, just more of a kind of a tutorial on how to put them on rather than anything else and uh, it's handy to separate them out okay separate them out and lay them down then beside you okay and the same now with our crosses one and three. Right, so we're going to start with our with our numbers. We'll do our numbers first. So we get our, uh, our decal and here's a little tip. Put the decal in, right, face down, right, not that way up, but face down. Because what can happen, believe it or not, is they can kind of curl. Is it here there? It will, they start to kind of curl just a little bit. Now, again, a little quick more, another quick adjustment of the camera. We get a more downward picture of what we're up to. Right. Oh yeah, another thing. I forgot about it. Another, another piece we will need is a piece of kitchen roll. Okay. The old kitchen roll. We always seem to want some kitchen roll. Now, <coughs> I think I found. I think I found with the decal setting solution. 
if you put that and try to use that, you can end up tipping it over, and it's, you know, it's not cheap stuff. It's not expensive, but it's not cheap either, right? So just pour a little bit into the cap. Then put that away where you're not going to be uh, doing... There's so I've very bad chance, hard chance, should I should say, of knocking that. It's over there. I'm not going next to or near it. Okay. So, now we've put a little bit of our decal setting solution onto where we want to put the decal. Just wet the area just a little bit. All right. There we go. Now, just before we take out the decal, you can pop in your next one into the water. Like I said, remember, oops, face down. All right. So we're going to take off our, take our, our decal now that we've been soaking there for about 60 seconds or so. Okay. Touch the corner of it off the off your tissue. All right. Like that. And that will so that will pull any bit of excess water off it. And then just leave it down. Leave it down on the flat surface. Okay. I'm bending down here because I dropped one of the decals. Okay. I dropped one of the decals. So I'm getting too much light there. Okay. I'm trying to adjust the cameras again there. Right, just so we can see what I'm what I what I'm doing. Okay. Now when your decal is all nice and flat and you have it soaked soaked away, using your your uh, tweezers, see will it move. Okay. So that's moving, I'm happy with that. Alright, so now pick up the whole lot, get your model ready, okay, you can see the big white blob, that will dry away, don't worry about it, that will all dry off. I, this is how I do it now, I push the decal slightly over, you get some people and they put them on that way, I tend not to, I don't know why, It's a, that's grand for say a big area like that, but when you're trying to put them into smaller areas, this I find is much easier, and you'll find out then you sort of do it even for areas where it doesn't need to be done. So take your decal off onto, onto your tweezers all together. Right, hold your model. And you have a little bit more control over your decal. Right until the very, very end. Okay. Now, again, just a small bit of... Uh, decal fluid, decal setting solution, just rub it on, and this is where you kind of, you have to kind of work a bit fast, you want to make sure that you have your decal on exactly how you want it, there we go, I'm happy with that, then get your cotton bud, and start off the decal, see the way I'm doing it, I'm rolling, rolling the uh, cotton bud across the decal, okay, now some people um, gloss coat before the decal, and once you finish the rolling, sorry, then you can start kind of uh, moving it around a bit, and what you're doing is you're pushing the decal down, and you're also dispelling any water or decal solution from underneath okay so you won't end up with any bubbles underneath it okay and push on to the side Once that's done, get another tiny little bit of decal solution on your brush. Remember, just a tiny bit, you just barely want to wet your brush, right? And just rub it on your decal, just moisten the decal, and there we go, finished. Okay, so now we're going to go on the other side, and we're going to repeat that. We're going to get our brush, decal solution. 
roughly in that area there. Okay. We will take out our decal out of the water. And we've lost it in the water. This happens sometimes when you leave them in just a little bit too long. And this is where the old tweezers comes in handy again. Out she pops. Now, try and get it the right way around. Get your decal. Slide it over. Using your tweezers. If you tilt your kit to the side and look at it from an aerial point of view, you will see where your other one is. So you're going to get that in, uh, uh, try, try and get them in line with each other. Oh, you can't always go by a visual mark and say, oh, over by the second nut. What if the second nut on this side is slightly off compared to the other side? Alright, so it's actually over just a little bit more. Uh, uh, trying to keep do everything, keeping it in vision. That's the hardest thing. And I'm trying to watch two things at the same time. All right. So now I've got my decal. That's about it. That's about the height. Bring it down slightly. Like I said, with, with the tweezers, you just have that little bit more control over what you're doing. Now, as we can see from that, see what I mean by, by looking down at it, you're getting them both roughly in the same area, and height-wise, both the same. This one's actually a little bit low, so we're going to see, can we just move it up slightly? Okay, we just use a bit of the decal solution on a brush. start and then you can sort of you can go jiggly jiggly with it then remember what you're trying to do is you're trying to push out any water or fluid that's underneath the decal so you don't going to end up with a bubble on it and you're drying off any excess then as well and like I said don't worry about that wet ring around there that will go away When you look at it from the other side, it's already gone from the other side. All right. So now we've got two decals on. I'm gonna have to maybe if I bring the camera just back, back a bit, get a much, uh, a much broader angle of what we're trying to do. Okay. Now we've got our little crosses. Now, because these are small ones, we can we, we can we will do we'll put two into the water at any one time. Remember, face down inside in the water. Okay, they are face down. They're in there. It's just light and it's a bit, it's a bit shiny. Okay. Now, excuse me. These are going to go directly under our numbers, but on this part here. So, one bit there, we'll do them one at a time. Take out our decal, pop it down, take out our decal and pop it down. Like I said, we don't want them to... Uh, some decals, they, they, they do take a fair amount of time to soak. And others then, like these ones here, these are, these, these are releasing from the paper quite quick, quite quickly indeed. And you can never really tell until you try. It's literally down to the manufacturer. 
of the decals and I wasn't even sure if these ones were going to work because they are so old but they did they do the job all right same again roll them out decal one applied the decals. You just want them to sort of melt into place because the, the uh, decal solution will kind of, in a way it kind of melts them, I think. That's what it appears to be doing anyway sometimes. Because sometimes you'll see them, they'll actually kind of start bubbling up after you put on the decal solution. If they do that, don't bother don't bother they'll settle themselves back down don't worry if they do start to kind of uh, crinkle I was putting a little bit extra on there hoping that if they would, would kind of crinkle up a bit but they're not you see them there it looks as if yeah they're kind of getting a bit bubbly don't worry about that that will all settle down and they will all that will all go away okay so we all we've left now is we've got one one of our crosses okay we we'll pop that in and our two divisional marks, okay, one and two. Now, where are we going to put these? Okay, we'll put the uh, on the back here. We put we'll put the cross. We'll put the cross here. Why not? It'll look nice there. It'll look very pretty. Okay, so we're going to stick the cross there. There's a name for them, Boykin Cross or something like that. But uh, I'm more than likely pronouncing it wrong, so I won't say it again. <laughs> okay, pop our decals, take off the extra bit, excess bit of uh, water that's on them. Because as we found with these ones, these are actually quite quick release. They release quite quickly. Hey, there we go. These are actually very, very quick in releasing, I must say. Um, I've come across decals and you're soaking them there for nearly five minutes sometimes. And even at that, they're, they're a struggle to get off the backing paper. But these ones are very, very easy to get off, right? So, we're putting our cross there. Straighten it up. Use a little bit of fluid on that there and that will help straighten it up as well okay that's straightened up using the brush so handy enough all right same idea again roll it get off most of the excess get any uh, fluid out from underneath the decal and the good old circular rubbing all right and move to the other side and our divisional mark. I think they're divisional marks. I don't know if they're sort of a, say company headquarters or you know within the division. What uh, they're not quite unit insignia. I think they're called divisional marks. I'm not 100% sure, and I have a good chance that I'm wrong. So, that's my little disclaimer. The fact that I could be wrong. <laughs> but I 
didn't I never have professed to be uh, technically perfect have I if you've ever watched any of my videos and my, my uh, unboxings yeah you know you don't have to be an expert just to, to build models you know I don't have to be an expert in the elephant to know everything about the elephant to build an elephant although I do find it handy and all that to say look at a couple of videos that are on YouTube the YouTube is brilliant for all that I've said it many many a time do your little bit buy your kit and whatever kit you get go off and see what videos are on YouTube about it okay not necessarily on the kit you bought but say on the on the vehicle in general just get a little bit of background and get you into the humor for building it might give you some ideas on how you're going to paint it and how you're going to um, you know represent it because the box art is only you know and the box art and the uh, shall we say the markings that they give you inside in it they're only say one way of doing them right for a one particular unit uh, which side have we got that on yeah but uh, that might vary you know there's uh, shall we say they'll give you three markings for a tiger tigers were used by more than three different companies uh, at different times those units would have changed their camouflage patterns um, because when the vehicles arrive, especially sort of mid to late war, with German vehicles anyway, when the vehicles arrived to the unit, they arrived in this colour, okay, they arrived in the uh, the dark yellow, Dunkelgelb, I like saying that, Dunkelgelb, they arrived in the dark yellow colour, and the company then were basically handed, or as part of their... Uh, supply they'd have green paint and brown paint okay dark green and red brown and they'd be basically then each company or whatever would have their own type style of uh, of applying the camouflage some units would have spray guns you know uh, they'd have them if they we didn't say the maintenance depot they'd have uh, air compressors and things like that and they'd have a spray gun so they might the, the camouflage pattern might be applied there or it might even be applied in the field itself by the unit in other words the unit might get it out and it might be look like that they're going into a wooded area and say no we'll stick out like a sore fucking thumb so they get out the paint and out in a couple of brushes and they go mental painting wiggly green lines and wiggly brown lines all over it and uh, if you look up close to some of those ones they've got quite um, quite visible uh, brush strokes quite visible brush strokes now there's the decals done okay so get your last little bit of decal solution pop it back into your bottle close it up and put it away until the next time and you should get a lifetime use out of a bottle you shouldn't have to sorry, for the amount of kits you buy you probably only have ever have to buy one bottle of that okay so it's worth the uh, five or six quid that it does cost now I'm after forgetting that I've got a couple of little bits of detail painting to do right so we'll get them done here while I'm at it um, I've got NATO black it's a grand color to use for the uh, for the jack maybe not be perfect color to use but again I've never been I've never been one to worry too much about it and also for the, uh, the, the the whole machine gun there black I think is a great the NATO black is a great color because it's not it's not black black uh, it's NATO black <laughs> but it's not a very very say, black color it, it, it's more of a dark gray and uh, it's a great base color for for machine guns There we go, there's the whole machine gun done. The area. There's my 
material done. And finally, my jack. Now, sometimes you can kind of leave the jack in the uh, in the the vehicle color. Um, quite a lot of units basically camouflaged over the jack even, and over the tools. And you'll see some that even the wood on the tools would have remnants of the camouflage colour. In other words, they were too lazy to take it off and they were camouflaging the vehicle. But with modellers, especially say me, like the likes of me, the hobby modeller and things like that, we like to do that little bit of a detail painting to make them stand out. Um, but remember, when you're sort of in the battle and in the field, you don't want things to stand out and look different and stick out. But um, for for a model and for a display piece, you you want to kind of a bit of a bit of artistic license. You play around with a bit of artistic license, and you'll make it look good. Okay. Oh. That'll do for me now. That's grand because I'll be weathering it after. So any bits of parts that I've left off, I've left over forgot to do. I can kind of get around to doing them after. Now I've no more tools or anything left on this one. Um, unusually so. Oh yes, the, I remember why, because the, the tools they came with it were horrible, so I decided not to use them. Um, so there we go, there's our decals done and our little bit of detail painting done. Right. Now, what have we left to do? I'm going to gloss coat that now next. I'm not going to do it on camera because we you know, don't need to see it going gloss. You'll see it the next time. The next time it'll be gloss coated and then we can start the weathering. And the reasons, two main reasons for the gloss coat. One, it'll seal in all that nice work that you've done to it. Okay, It'll seal in your decals. It'll uh, if you've got a camouflage pattern or if you know for detail painting and things like that it'll seal all that in so then when you go to your weathering if you especially if, if you use uh, oil paints for weathering if you make a mistake you can wipe them off if you don't have a if you leave them say doing it with the flat and you start your uh, weathering on the flat you can't remove it you're stuck basically you're stuck with it and if your wash is that little bit too dark then you're left with a dark, dark wash. Now, it's the same when it comes to um, doing the chipping. Now, you could chip it away at this stage, but I prefer to leave it until I, until I have the, uh, the the glass coat and all that done. Now, the, the, uh, the, the, the chipping, you're actually using, say, ordinary acrylic paint, and you're not going to be able to remove that, you know, but... Um, you know, it's it's down to personal preference when it comes to the chipping. A lot of people would chip at this stage, and then glass coat and you know do their their uh, oil weathering after that. But I do it all at, at that stage. So I'm going to leave it at that, lads. The next I'm, the next time you see it, it will have its glass coat, and we're going to make a start on the weathering. And I'll show you what we need for weathering, making down our own washes, and a uh, little bit of uh, dot filtering blending and all that kind of stuff and some um, some some chipping and some scratches and things like that so we'll do one side of it so the video won't be too long and you won't be watching me doing things all over the, all over the vehicle we can get it all sort of done over the next couple of days so anyway lads thanks very much for taking your time out to watch the video don't forget to stay tuned stay tuned and you might learn some more or I might learn some more even and uh, <coughs> don't forget to hit the bell and subscribe and by hitting the bell you'll be notified as soon as I upload another video so stay tuned to the channel lads um, plenty more to come um, I'm going doing an aircraft after this one yes John is going over to the dark side and I'm doing an aircraft so if you're into your aircraft get over there you know and watch it so 
subscribe to the channel in other words is basically what I'm saying and uh, also there is a Facebook page uh, accompanying well accompanying the channel more than anything else and uh, it gives you a chance to post up your own stuff there's a nice group there, there's over 600 members already who regularly post and uh, some nice comments from from, from, from from fellow modelers, okay, hobbyists, hobby modelers and there's some really 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 good modelers there as well and there's some then like me who are just sort of we get okay results uh, okay so see you over there on the Facebook page that's JMSM on the Facebook page and uh, all the links will be down in the description box below okay so see you soon lads take care enjoy your modeling have a nice Christmas because uh, it's what six days to Christmas now that's when this video has been made but when you watch it is another thing but we're very very close to Christmas of 2020 possibly the worst year people have ever put down 2020 horrible horrible year but uh, good year for modeling because you know a lot of people in lockdown you're, you're stuck at home so what else are you going to do you're going to do a bit of modeling I'll see you on the next one take care ta-da go and buy yourself a kit build it and enjoy it catch you soon take care